What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. This is now episode 37, and we're back with our Who's Better series. It's going to be part two of the series, and today we're going to be breaking down who the better player is between Julius Randle and Christoph Porzingis. But, you know, before we hop into all of that, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice little review. And also, the subscriber of the day today is going to be Shells. We appreciate you liking and subscribing, turn on post notification, and just supporting our podcast and our channel overall. But as far as Julius Randle and Christoph Porzingis, I think these are two guys that, you know, are I would consider premier players in the NBA at this point of their careers. Um, we've seen a ton of development in Julius Randle's game and a slight decline in Christoph Porzingis' game. So it kind of evens out the playing field when, you know, you kind of try to consider who the better player is overall. And, you know, with all that being said, we're going to have Sam from the gold mine give his thoughts and concerns on who he thinks the better player is between the two. But Sam, how are you doing, man? Hey, Greg. Hey, Nicely. How are we all doing? Uh, so when we're talking, in my opinion, about Randall and Porzingis, I'm definitely leaning Randall. And I, I, I think it's pretty comfortable for me. I think Julius Randall's been one of the more underrated players in the league for a while. And it's really hard to find an area where Porzingis hasn't beat these days. I mean, statistically, it's kind of tough, right? Because Doncic is a side Porzingis, so his points totals are going to be down. And even his rebounds numbers are going to be down too. But when you're looking at Randall and what he's done with the Knicks this season, I mean, he's got 24 game and 10 boards. He's shooting 42% from three as the primary focal point of that offense. I think it's really, really hard to discount what he does, especially when you factor in the assist numbers as well at 5.9. I like Porzingis a lot. I think his game's a good fit for the modern NBA, but Randall has really added a good in-between game. He can score at all three levels now. He's good on the glass. He's a good passer. And I think this season is really just the culmination of two really good seasons before that and just breaking out as the number one in the Knicks system. I mean, from all those offensive aspects i i agree with you 100 percent, sam i mean as far as Randall, i mean i think he has a much quicker first step you know he's a walking mismatch if you put a big man on him he's got the capability and the ball handling skills to be able to surpass him and get to the lane and you know finish above the rim and everything and then if you put a smaller guard on him he's been able to improve on his jump shot from you know three point range and you know in the elbow he's marvelous from that standpoint so with all that coming into account i think He's much better offensively as a player than, you know, Christoph Porzingis. But, I mean, Greg, what are your thoughts on Randall? I love what I'm seeing from Randall. I mean, when he gets in that triple threat position, that is dangerous. Like, he's like – he sees the court. That's what that, that's what I like about him this year is that he's seeing the court very well. To be able to play make and get his teammates involved who are young and develop them on the court and put them in the right positions for them to succeed. You need a leader, especially and Randall's doing it at age 26, so he's developing very nicely, and that's what I like to see. And then also, he's stretching it out, opening up the floor for his teammates and opening up the floor for himself. And like Sam alluded to about his mid-range game, his mid-range game is better too. His post moves and when he faces up, he can get to the basket and you said it too, his quick first step. So that's what I'm liking from Julius Randle on the offensive end. He's opening it up for his teammates and opening up opportunities for himself. He looks very comfortable when he puts the ball on the ground and he can finish with anybody. You know, I, I think what sets him apart from, you know, KP, other than, you know, just his do-it-all ability, it's his durability. Yeah. I mean, he's available. This is something that, you know, we value a lot, especially in today's game. You know, with a crazy season like this, where you're, where the games are so compact that you're having five games in seven days, it, availability is going to be, you know, a huge factor. I mean, it's what's determined the MVP race to an extent. So, exactly. I, I, I really like Randall from that standpoint. And you know, his scoring capability, he, he's much more versatile than KP, if you ask me, man. I mean, I think really, aside from you know KP's range, he doesn't have Randall beat in too many areas offensively. They both are pretty good um, scoring the basketball, obviously. They, uh, I mean, obviously, Randall, you know, he's more versatile in his spots, I would say. But, you know, he also brings playmaking to the table, being able to create shots for his teammates like R.J. Barrett. Reggie Bullock has, you know, improved this season. Guys like Derrick Rose, they've been phenomenal with him in the pick and roll, you know, situations like that. And I just think that this Knicks team is in, they got a very bright future, and they could possibly use Randall as, you know, an asset to get 
trade for a superstar but you know we're not going to talk about all that just yet but yeah I, I mean there's just so many things that randall does well on the offensive side of the basketball i mean he's a three level score yeah this guy moves like a guard he can erupt for 30 on any given night he's efficient he can lead the break playmaking ability obviously high motor tenacity i mean there's a, i could i could go on yeah man. great I mean, leader as, as yeah. far as as far as christoph's Porzingis, what would you say that you know he, he takes the cake in as far as like being better than Randall in certain aspects. Just shooting. I mean, he, he the ability to shoot the ball and like and stretch it out, like coming off the pick and pop and knocking down shots consistently. I mean, that's really it. Because when you think about a seven three big, he's not a guy that's gonna bang with you inside. He's not gonna back you down in the post. So it's really just him coming off the screens or him getting facing up and knocking down shots from the mid range. I, the I think shot. you could possibly make an argument for he might be a better off ball player. Yeah. But yeah. I think as far as like the utilization of the pick and roll, I mean, there's there's different aspects from it. I think Randall's more so gonna be the person receiving the pick rather than setting that it. Is, yeah. Kristaps, he's great rolling to the basket. He's a lob threat. And you, you know, you obviously talked about his post up ability in the mid range. You know, I think he he excels in that aspect as well. But I, what I like, in, even in those situations, Kristaps in the mid post and elbow areas, he's looking to face up rather than you know Randall. He's more so probably going to look to drive depending on his matchup. But Randall's getting better at facing up and with your with his quick step ability, with him getting that triple step position and him being able to play make. I think he's. I think he can edge. Kristaps Porzingis in that, especially because Kristaps is not mobile as he is. So, um, I think I think as far as Kristaps' offensive game, I think he, judging off you know what he's done in, throughout his career, I'll probably give him the edge as far as being a set shooter. We yeah. still don't really know. Like, I mean, Randall's had a great year this year, but we still I still don't know if I'm a hundred percent sure if I can just trust him knocking down that shot consistently for maybe years for, to come. Yeah, maybe from the corner, but not from anything anywhere else on the court. And yeah. obviously, you know, I think Kristaps has him beat when it comes to three point range. I haven't seen a forty footer, thirty five footer from Randall all year, despite him basically improving in every aspect of his game. And also I think Kristaps, you know, he's a better passer out of double teams. Not overall, but just out of double teams, just given the fact that he's a seven-footer. And then I think um, he's a better offensive rebounder. And, and yeah. that's for obvious reasons. I mean, he's 7'3". Seven, seven, three. Three. But, you know, as far as – despite all of that, I, I would say Randall is the better offensive player, and he hasn't beat in the majority of, you know, the boxes. But when it comes to weaknesses, what do you think Randall – needs to improve on i think randall needs to improve on just obviously his shooting if you're gonna be that that small ball guy in the in the in this in the versatile league i think you need to extend um extend your range just a little bit more and then okay so it's range not more so than shooting because he, yeah he has yeah, he has yeah he has improved his shooting i like his shooting form it's just the range okay yeah I mean, especially in the way they use him in the offense i mean he's i mean they put him in the elbow they put him in a short corner maybe sometimes he's not really just out there on the perimeter maybe in the corner knocking down three pointers like it or in a pick and roll situation he's not really like how chris ops being used where chris ops you can put him on the wing or or coming off a of pick and pop he's gonna knock it down that's not how randall's really using the new york knicks offense right, so it's kind of hard they definitely to have compare. different roles yeah it's definitely different roles so for him if he expanded that he's expanded that range in the new york knicks offense that would be dangerous for them for years to come. oh certainly yeah certainly. so that's one thing for me but i think for everything else i think just um i think everything else is cool to me oh uh, i mean if you ask me i think given the fact that you know he's gonna be the anchor for the offense yeah. and it's his responsibility to get guys open and, you know create the best possible shot for the knicks on a nightly basis i would say cutting down on his turnovers, turnovers yep. he averages 3.4 per game i mean you know i think through as time go progresses and everything i think he'll improve from that aspect and on the defensive side his shot blocking ability definitely needs to improve he only averages 0.3 blocks per game and with somebody with his size strength and you know athleticism i think he definitely needs to do a better job of utilizing it don't let that stuff go to waste because once you get older and everything you're not going to be able to utilize it um to the best of your ability but lastly how he performs in the clutch yeah i think at times this year he's he's lost concentration down the stretch i mean you look at those games where they play like teams like the brooklyn nets and you know he just gets so frustrated and he just i just feel like he, he struggles 
concentrating on the the overall task offensively or on a defensive assignment. And that, to your point, I think it's a lack of experience for those clutch moments, not getting a lot of opportunities in his early career to really experience those clutch moments. So I think more and more that he gets those opportunities to be that because he's becoming a leader now nicely. So I think that in this offense, so I think the more and more that he's being more dependent on, he will learn how to be more clutch in those moments where to where to where he needs to be on the spots on those floor in those clutch moments. Yeah, I, I think that's probably the best point that's been made this entire episode. Yeah. But I mean, as far as Christoph Porzingis, obviously his weakness is his durability and I think most importantly is his lack of assertiveness. Yeah. This probably has to do a little bit with, you know, the fact that Luca's very ball dominant. But as a big man, I think voice your opinion. You know, Shaq definitely let Kobe know that he needed the ball down low and everything. I think Kristaps Porzingis needs to be a little bit more vocal about having the ball in his hands. And ultimately, I don't think that they will have as much of a beef, quote unquote, as they have if he vocals, you know, his dis likes in the offense and everything exactly and that's what mark cuban said as well he said that if luca needs to know that if he just speaks up and has a, re- a good relationship with luca on the floor um everything it, should work yeah out. everything should work out because i think there would be a great duo but i think also Kristaps needs to understand that this is not your new new york days anymore bro. you're not getting enough touches that you luca's like you said is a ball down you're not gonna get a lot of touches so when you get the but ball, i think i think luca doesn't look for his big man enough yeah that's a great point too I think I think so. He can, I, I understand his frustration. Yeah, I think he can look for KP more, but he's not on the court that much, so it's gonna be hard to look for him. Yeah, get that's those a, that's opportunities. A good point. That's but a good point. but I mean, I, I think another area that he ne- needs to improve is obviously he has no low post game. Yeah, face up turnaround jumpers all the time, and then you know spot up three point shots. He's gonna have this pick and roll scenario, and you know he's also a lob threat, but he has no post game just fadeaways and you know turnaround fades and stuff like that so i mean i think he definitely needs to develop on that aspect of his game and you know you can say that about a lot of bigs but i think it would really help kp if he's able to be somebody who can hit you with a few post moves inside be dominant from um that standpoint while, while also having a three-point shot in his arsenal and be able to knock down shots from the mid-range and then also that will allow him to get more free throw attempts because he only averages like three free throws a game yeah and for somebody who from his star status and everything i think he definitely needs to up those free throw attempts and then obviously on the defensive end he struggles yeah because with, with his lack of mobility because of injury so yeah i mean to be honest like you said uh, before we recorded i mean their numbers are very similar when we looked them up and this this comparison video is very, surprisingly yeah, similar surprisingly similar so for, for all the people that think that randall's having a better season this year i mean they actually haven't been too far off throughout their entire car- careers and everything so we have to take that into account so i mean i'm gonna take randall as of right now but nicely who who would you take i'm definitely taking julius randall i think he brings more to the game offensively um on the defensive end he can guard one through four good lateral quickness strength switchability and he can rebound just as well as chris stops yeah that's so, true i think i'll take his versatility all day i do i do like porzingis i do like Porzingis. i really like porzingis when they got him at four and they were hating on him and the way he transitioned to be the player that he is before all these injuries he was very good for the knicks i just think that now with the modern nba the you have to be versatile on both sides of the floor and that's where randall blings and he's a leader too he's not he's not a he's not a drama queen or nothing like that like he's gonna make his teammates better so i think that's why i have to take randall at this moment but i do like porzingis because he's a great he can he can extend the defense and open up this floor for for his teammates right and i i just think randall has a better impact overall like whether it's on the court off the court in the locker room you know he's very vocal like he's just not you know a one-dimensional player exactly like you're, you're gonna get a number of sides from him. you know his tenacity intensity you know he wants to win he gets very frustrated when losses and things of that nature and when he underperforms so gonna I, hold I, teammates I, accountable yeah, yeah. and I, I just don't see that out of Kristaps I feel like Kristaps he's more so he wants to be that guy but I think he wants to be a franchise player, player yeah and he probably could be on a mediocre team but it's not going to translate it the wins be, like yeah, it Julius is doing it yeah. wouldn't be bad to be the number two guy in Dallas but I do think that you know he has to be available you know showcase that he can be dependent on and then Luka Doncic also needs to you know look to him a little bit more for those guys to really work things out in Dallas but let us know what you guys think in the comment section make sure to like comment and subscribe if you
you're new to the YouTube channel, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, do us a big favor. Give us a review and give us a five-star rating. Y'all know we deserve it. But, you know, <laughs> aside from that, we really appreciate you guys tuning into another episode. But outside of that, you know, we're going to be back for another episode in a few days. But make sure you guys, once again, like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notification and show mad love in the comment section. But besides that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. And we out. We out. <laughs>